This morning, the owner of Schweitzer says staff members are being verbally abused by their visitors who refuse to follow mask and social distance rules at their resort. Now, the resort has canceled an upcoming event. Coming up live on Up With Kramer, we're talking more about that decision. Plus, we'll tell you more about vaccine studies coming up as well this, on this half hour of Up With Krem as researchers have set out to explore why people believe in COVID-19 myths. And we're taking a look at rain coming down and it's going to continue to do so throughout the day today before strong wind moves in. I'll let you know what that means for down trees and down power. President Trump is either banned or suspended from almost all social media networks. This morning, we ask you for your thoughts on the latest decision by Facebook and Twitter. Up with Krim begins now. Like all Jeopardy fans, I miss Alex very much. And I thank him for everything he did for all of us. Well, this morning, Jeopardy is moving forward with an interim host following the death of Alex Trebek. All-time champion and Washington native Ken Jennings is filling in for the time being. In Jennings' first show, he touched on Trebek's legacy, as you heard there. Oh, look at how much he's grown up. I know, I know. Uh, of course, he's the GOAT, and yeah. we kind of speculated that he might be filling that role. It's just an interim basis right mm -hmm. now. But I watched what he had to say to start the show last night, and uh, it was very moving. And he said, you know what? Alex would want us to continue playing on with the game, and so that's what they did. And I can't think of many of the candidates. We've talked about all the candidates that are options for the host, the new host position. I can't think of many people that I think Alex would be a fan of more than taking over the reins than Ken himself, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's been my pick from the beginning because he's a Washington native and yeah. he's the GOAT. But, hey, it remains to be seen who's going to fill that role permanently. Ah, oh, man. Can't wait. All right. Guys, we got a lot to talk about. Got to do it. Got to dive into weather. Got to take it away right now because we have a winter weather advisory in place and, well, we also have a wind advisory in place for wind gusts nearing 55 miles per hour. That'll be tomorrow morning. But to get there, it's a rather interesting forecast, one that comes with warm temperatures and quite a bit of rain. We're warm enough this morning that everybody's getting rain as we kick things off. You have to head up pretty high in elevation to find any sort of snow. And once you do, it's a lot of it. That's how heavy our rain is down a little bit lower. And that's all thanks to an atmospheric river. It brings us warmer temperatures and a whole lot of moisture. We're going to get that next push of moisture kind of working in here. It's catching up to our current ones, so we don't really get a break in the early hours of the day. We just get heavier rain. As we get into the afternoon, might catch a quick break, and then, well, it's raining as soon as it basically stops. There's really no significant break in the moisture, and so you can expect it to stick around until the wind picks up, which will be early tomorrow morning. That'll keep our temperatures quite mild today and tomorrow. We are in the 40s both days. Tomorrow offers a little bit of sunshine after that wind, but boy, temperatures really drop once that wind is done. So tomorrow morning's temp will be the high. It's a really interesting one, and I'm going to walk you through just why all of this is going on coming up in the full forecast. Jeremy, thank you so much. 631 now. Well, this morning, the Inland Northwest is home to a new COVID-19 vaccine trial. Multicare will test the Novavax vaccine on thousands of volunteers from right here in the Inland Northwest. So it's looking to recruit about 300 people. And tonight, researchers and doctors will be able to answer any of your questions during a town hall. That begins at 5.30 p.m. Anyone interested needs to register online beforehand. So for the link to register, you can text TRIAL to 509-448-2000, and we'll send that link right to your phone. Well, last week, we welcomed one of the experts as well to the show to answer your questions. And tomorrow, he will be back with us to answer any other questions surrounding the vaccine trial and any uh, lingering questions from tonight's virtual town hall. 632 this morning. Here are three things you need to know about the coronavirus this morning. Number one, people could soon be driving to Disneyland to get the COVID vaccine. The California resort opens later this week as a major vaccine distribution point. It'll be one of five so-called super pod sites in Orange County. Now these sites are expected to be able to vaccinate thousands of people per day. Number two, the chief scientist at the World Health Organization says the world will not achieve COVID-19 herd immunity this year. 
Despite vaccines rolling out, the doctor says we must keep complying with social distancing and other measures. She also noted while a few countries may receive immunity, it will not be enough to protect the rest of the world. And number three, as that vaccine rollout continues, there are still plenty of people who still falsely believe that the virus is a hoax. Researchers at the Oregon State University are working to understand why. They surveyed 520 participants across the country and two specific communities in their study were more likely not to trust medical and scientific establishments. Republicans and those who lean libertarian or Republican tend to believe those hoax type uh, attitudes more than uh, people who lean left. Um, but uh, it's not all that direction. So, for example, people of color also tend to believe more that uh, COVID is a hoax. The study also found that those communities had similar attitudes regarding vaccinations. And the goal of this ongoing research is to help governments improve the overall response and overall receptiveness to government's ability to communicate with the public so they can build trust where historically there hasn't been a lot. Well, let's take a look at what's trending, a topic that has been really popular over the past couple of days. President Trump has either been suspended or banned from almost all social media outlets and networks. Now, before we dive into this topic, we do want to know what you think. Do you agree with the decision to ban President Trump from social media? Let us know your answer. Text us 509-448-2000 and we'll put them here on Up With Creme. All right, the list is pretty long here. We watched social media companies one after another this past weekend make the announcement. Twitter has permanently suspended President Trump, citing the risk that he would incite further violence. His account, which had 88.7 million followers, has now vanished. Trump appears to be in danger of losing almost powerful, almost all of his social media megaphones. Facebook and Instagram has banned the president for at least two weeks and possibly indefinitely. Snapchat on Thursday cut off access to Mr. Trump's Snapchat account. YouTube lightened its election fraud misinformation policy to make it easier to take action against the president for posting falsehoods. And then Amazon's video streaming platform Twitch also suspended Trump's account. Shopify took down two online stores affiliated with President Trump. Now, his actions are also impacting the sports world. The PGA voted to move next year's PGA championship from the Trump National Golf Club. The PGA CEO says the board started talking about the move right after the riot. Next year's championship was the only event listed on Trump's organization website. No word on where the competition will go instead. Now, we are seeing some strong oppositions. Trump's suspension earned quick praise from one side. The other side said this is extreme censorship um, and they will not be silenced. And we're continuing this conversation over on our Facebook page and on social media this morning. But again, do you agree with the decision to ban President Trump on social media? Let us know. Text us in 509-448-2000. I'm already getting a lot of responses. I see them coming into my iPad this morning. Uh, so we'll continue this conversation. Jen. Yeah, Dana Marie, I'm seeing those come in too. A lot of people saying they are in favor of the ban, but a lot of people saying no, they, they believe it is censorship. censorship. So uh, keep those comments coming. We'll be looking into those later in the program. Here at 636, this morning, Schweitzer Mountain Resort is taking swift action to combat harassment against employees. The resort is canceling some weekend events due to verbal abuse from guests, and it all surrounds a mask mandate. So coming up, we speak with leaders at Schweitzer about what this means for the resort.